This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Sunrise at Mount Sinai, the mountain long thought to be the place where Moses received the Ten Commandments. Thousands of tourists come here each year, making the pilgrimage to the site of that great biblical event. Have they all been coming to the wrong place? The of Sinai is a land sacred to Jews and Christians all over the world. According to the Bible, Moses received the Ten Commandments somewhere in the Sinai more than 3,000 years ago. A barren peninsula, ironically, it has long been one of the most strategic spots on Earth. The Sinai is the land bridge between Asia and Africa. Alexander the Great crossed it with his army in seven days. Roman Emperor Titus took only five. Modern armor rolls over it in a few hours. It has been fought over more than any other place in history. The Sinai is the same today as it was in the time of the Bible. Bedouin tribesmen lead a nomadic existence almost identical to that of the Israelites who went on the Exodus. How did the Israelites survive that famous passage through the Sinai? Modern Bedouin have learned that no single area can support them for long. It seems strange, therefore, that the Bible says more than two million Israelites were camped at Mount Sinai for 10 months. But where is the mountain? The search must begin with the Old Testament, which is where the story of the Exodus was first told. Moses was born in Egypt to a family of Hebrew slaves. When he was a teenager, he killed an Egyptian slave driver and fled into the wilderness. For 60 years, he lived in the desert. And as best we can tell, that desert was the Sinai. Moses spent those years as a shepherd. 60 years of solitude, 60 years during which he was exposed to the elemental forces of the desert. The Bible itself describes the time when Moses first arrived at Mount Sinai. And Moses led the flock unto the farthest end of the wilderness and came to the mountain of God. Moses was about to come upon the burning bush. A biblical legend says that he was looking for a stray from his flock on the holy mountain. His compassion for the young animal apparently convinced the Lord to speak. Draw not hither, put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moses had come face to face with his destiny. He was to return to Egypt, the place where he was born. As a humble shepherd, he would walk into the court of the most powerful monarch of his time and tell him on behalf of an invisible God to let my people go. The Pharaoh refused and Egypt was assailed by 10 plagues. The last plague was said to be the slaying of the firstborn. Pharaoh was a firstborn son. Desperately, he went to Moses and told him to take his people and leave. The Bible tells us that three months later, the Israelites arrived at Mount Sinai. Moses was called to the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments.
Where was Mount Sinai? No organized effort was made. No one tried to find it until 1,500 years had passed. By then, the earliest Chinese dynasties had been founded, Rome had risen to power, and Christ had lived and died. Soon after his death, the era of Christian pilgrimage began. Even though more than a millennium had passed since the time of the Exodus, some of those early pilgrims tried to identify Mount Sinai. One particular mountain in the southern Sinai attracted a great deal of attention. It was Jebel Musa, which is Arabic for the Mountain of Moses. 300 years after Christ was born, the monastery of Santa Caterina was founded on the slopes of Jebel Musa. Early Christian pilgrims believed this was the site of the burning bush. Local legend says it's still growing in the monastery courtyard. The first structure in Santa Caterina was the Church of Transfiguration. It was built in the fourth century by Helena, a woman who had devoted her life to identifying locations in the Bible. Helena agreed with Jebel Musa's designation as Mount Sinai. We don't know why. Thus, in the earliest centuries of Christian history, a speculative theory was accepted as an established fact. The Emperor Justinian also believed that Jebel Musa was Mount Sinai. In the sixth century, he added the monastery walls to protect the monks from invading Turks and Muslims. Until just a few years ago, these lifts were the only way in or out. They were raised and lowered from inside the monastery. Santa Caterina's Greek Orthodox monks have survived here for 16 centuries. Each monk prepares his own meals and is bound only by the daily schedule of eight hours of prayer. Spiritual lives that are led in Santa Caterina end in the House of Bones. Every monk who ever died at Santa Caterina is here, presided over by Saint Stephen. Stephen was found in this position 1,500 years ago at the top of the Steps of Repentance near Jebel Musa's summit. He spent his life listening to visitors' confessions before they climbed to the top of the mountain. Jebel Musa looks down on a valley called Eraha, which means the resting place. If Jebel Musa is Mount Sinai, then the Israelites waited here while Moses climbed the mountain. The Bible says that Moses spent 40 days atop Mount Sinai when he didn't return quickly enough, the Israelites below began to worship the golden calf. Building a false god so soon after the miracles of the Exodus was a terrible breach of faith. The monks of Santa Catarina believe the spot is marked with this natural form in the granite. The fact that the monks believe Jebel Musa is Mount Sinai doesn't make it so. Legend, no matter how old, is not proof. What exactly happened 1,600 years ago that caused Jebel Musa to be called Mount Sinai? The first time we are hearing about Mount, uh, Jebel Musa as Mount Sinai is in the Byzantine period. It means in the fourth century, in the beginning of this period, while quite a lot of monks, hermits, came to the area of uh, St. Catherine, what is now St. Catherine, and they uh, begin to live uh, there. And, uh, For almost 10 years, Avne Goran was in charge of all archaeological sites in the Sinai. From the archaeological point of view, the difficulty in located Mount Sinai is the fact that the children of Israel who left uh, Egypt 
over 3,000 years ago uh, were nomads and uh, like the Bedouin uh, in Sinai in recent times and the nomads left almost no remains behind them. Goran is pointing out a basic problem. So far, no physical evidence of the exodus has been found. What the Hebrew nomads left behind has probably vanished. It means that even if uh, Mount Moses or any other mountain was Mount Sinai, uh, we will not discover any remains around it. And uh, as archaeologists, we will never will be able to say uh, where was this mountain. It is possible that Jebel Musa is Mount Sinai. It is also possible that Mount Sinai is any one of a thousand other peaks in the peninsula. There is simply no proof to support Jebel Musa's claim as the holy mountain. Remains of the earliest Hebrews have been found 60 miles northwest of Santa Catarina in a place that was already called the land of God at the time of the Exodus. Could this be the place where Moses received the Ten Commandments? Jericho was the first city the Israelites reached after they entered the Promised Land. Its archaeological remains are as old as the Exodus. The Israelites left no such remains when they crossed the Sinai. That makes retracing their steps extremely difficult. A common misconception holds that the Israelites spent 40 years wandering through the wilderness. But the Bible tells us they wandered in the Sinai for only two years. The other 38 years was spent at an oasis not far from the Promised Land. If we knew the route the Israelites followed, we would be much closer to locating Mount Sinai itself. There are different theories for the route of the Exodus, but they all share the same starting point. The northeastern section of the Nile Delta, what the Bible called the Land of Goshen. The Hebrews had migrated to Egypt during a time of famine in their homeland. They prospered until there came to power a pharaoh who enslaved them to help rebuild Egypt after a devastating foreign occupation. One of the cities the Hebrew slaves built was the starting point of the Exodus. The city of Ramses was a bustling metropolis more than 3,000 years ago. If the generally accepted theory about the date of the Exodus is correct, the Pharaoh confronted by Moses would have been Ramses II. Ramses built more cities and monuments than any other Egyptian monarch. As the third ruler of the 19th dynasty, he was the beneficiary of the pharaohs before him who had brought Egyptian culture to a peak of vibrancy and power. The Hebrew revolt must have come as a severe blow. By the time the Hebrew slaves left Egypt, they had undoubtedly absorbed a certain amount of Egyptian religion. The mountain in Sinai, where they went to receive the Ten Commandments, might have been an Egyptian place of worship, a mountain in the desert that was already sacred. There is such a place in the southern Sinai. In 1762, a Danish traveler named Karsten Niebuhr came to the southwestern Sinai and discovered what the Bedouin had always known. An Egyptian temple, almost 4,000 years old, was on a plateau called Serabit el Khadem. In the Bible, the nickname, the second name for uh, Mount Sinai is Mount of God. And in the Egyptian inscriptions, 
in Serabit and also in other places in Egypt, the name of the same place is Land of God. Tzvi Ilan is a geographical historian at Tel Aviv University. He has just published a proposal which puts Mount Sinai at Sarabit El Khadem. This was, as we can imagine, the place of the holy mount that the Israelites, especially Moses, knew before. A religious center to the shepherds in the Sinai. Sarabit El Khadem is the only Egyptian temple in the entire Sinai. If the Hebrew slaves wanted to receive the Ten Commandments at a site already sacred, then Sarabit El Khadem would have been the ideal location. The area has been a gathering point throughout the centuries. The desert floor below Sarabit El Khadem is still used for an annual festival for Bedouin tribes from all parts of the Sinai. That means the Bedouin know this as an area that will support life. The Israelites may have known it too. The Bible says they were camped at Mount Sinai for 10 months. According to the figures, there must have been at least 2 million Israelites on the Exodus. Like the Bedouin, they would have known that they could survive here. The Egyptian temple at Sarabit El Khadem was begun approximately 700 years before the Exodus took place. The first part of the temple was the cave of Hathor, who was an important Egyptian deity. Hathor may have been the inspiration for the golden calf. Although she often appears as a human, that is not her most common form. In some places in Egypt, you can see Hathor as a golden cow. For many generations, people thought that the origin of it is Egypt maybe the bull apis but now if i am right in suggesting uh Sarabit as mount sinai maybe that i can point a something more realistic for the golden calf i mean hathor itself while scholarly discussion centers on hathor the fundamental question is, were the Israelites here at all? Temple carvings show Semitic figures on foot, with Egyptians mounted on donkeys. The Semites in these carvings could have been the Hebrew slaves, since they are obviously subservient to the Egyptians. Still, there is far more startling evidence. It can be found about a mile from the temple. The entrance to the cave is inconspicuous, easy to miss. In fact, it was only discovered in the last part of the 19th century. Thousands of years ago, someone carved the first letters in history into the walls of this cave. These carvings are called the Proto-Sinitic inscriptions. Most of the inscriptions ask for blessings from Hator. They represent a landmark in human history because they were carved in characters that are the earliest forerunners of our own alphabet. What startled archaeologists was a second inscription in a cave nearby. It implied that religious Hebrews stood on this spot thousands of years ago. Inscribed on the wall were the characters for the word El, which is the name of the Hebrew God. The 
man who carved the name of the Hebrew God at Serapit El Chadem lived approximately at the time of Moses. The inscriptions he left behind raised some intriguing questions. Were some of the inscriptions at Serapit El Chadem made by the Israelites of the Exodus? And if so, are the caves of the inscriptions on Mount Sinai itself? One of the last verses in the Old Testament tells us that no man knows where Moses is buried. The same thing has held true for Mount Sinai. Now there is hope that we may soon identify the mountain where Moses changed the course of history. The Sinai has been the battleground for more than 50 invading armies since the beginning of recorded history. It has absorbed the ruins of ancient and modern chariots and the ghosts of countless soldiers. It has been an unyielding witness to the fleeting struggles of man and a silent guardian of his oldest religious mysteries. Soon, it may surrender one of its greatest secrets, the true location of Mount Sinai. Coming up next, agents go hunting for a kidnapper on FBI, The Untold Stories. Then on History's Crimes and Trials, the story of convicted spies Ethel and Julius Rosenberg and their controversial execution. And later tonight, History's Mysteries reveals what turned the Hatfields and McCoys into America's most notorious feuding families at 8.